Sharia, you are on mute? No, no, you're not, you are muted. Hello. Um, I, I'm. I think I'm waiting for the organizer to start. Perhaps there's something wrong with Sharia. Isaac may maybe I can um, say some words. I saw. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Uh, yeah, while waiting for for Sharia, you can you, you can you can take uh, take take us to the discussion. Teams says that uh, the, the the computer broke down. Please turn off your your microphones. So it is um yeah uh, um. The site at the event, and it's an honor for us to um, to get this okay, occasion to inform uh, the participants in the preparation of the COP4 about the uh, yeah, current uh, situation and ongoing news um, from the uh, uh, issue of dental use of dental amalgam. And uh, so, uh, I would like just to to hand over to Dominic Bali, who is a keynote speaker. And uh, maybe uh, Dominic, please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Florian. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you from all around the world. I'm Dominic Bali, Vice President of Africa for World Alliance of Micro Free Dentistry. And today, my presentation will be an alternate of good news and bad news about the entire amalgam. And if you allow me, I can start introducing that presentation so that it will give you the content of what we intend to speak during this hour of this site event. Can I share my screen now if you... Are you able to, to see the PowerPoint now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, as I was saying, I'll be talking about uh, phasing out the dental amalgam and emerging need to eliminate mercury in products. And as I said initially, uh, my presentation will be alternate on these three points. Is it moving? I'll be talking about the dental amalgam phase out from the countries to region and then to the globe and present the situation of Africa region and dental amalgam in Mercury Treaty negotiation, which was a long affinity and now why it's a priority to, to phase out dental amalgam. And as introduction, as I used to say, I said that uh, 
as bad news, we know that dental amalgam is a toxic to the patient and even for dentists, and especially from during the removal of dental amalgam from the cavity, we can see that about 220 micrograms of mercury could be released per day when exposed by high temperature in mouth, which is the case in a lot of develop, de developing countries, especially those on the subtropical and equatorial climate, and which is a large source of mercury emission in dental clinics. But the good news is that we have alternative materials like glass ionomer cement, composite, which are, and even the, the composite especially, which are available, affordable, and efficient. And another good news is that there is quasi no use of, we can use the alternative materials without electricity, no need of dental chair, no sophisticated equipment, and the procedures are could be performed even in remote areas like in rural areas that we know in Africa and even in some countries in Southeast Asia, in, in Southeast Asia and even in Latin America. But the bad news also with dental amalgam is that when we have to use it, the cavity preparation takes away so much sound tooth of the structure. And in developing countries especially, there is no capacity to dispose of amalgam and it's when it's possible or when it's feasible, it's very costly for countries to dispose the entire amalgam. The good news is that for long for a long period now, countries and even regions have started banning or phasing out dental amalgam. And you could see that from 2008, for example, Norway and Sweden already banned dental amalgam and Finland joined in 2008, followed by Japan started earlier in, in, 90, in 80s for, uh, for reducing dental amalgam, followed by Netherlands, where in these two countries we are only 5% of, of dental amalgam is used for restoration. Some countries like Vietnam, Bangladesh have started, has phased out dental amalgam since last year, 2000, 2021 and 2022 this year. And Nepal is, has scheduled phasing out dental amalgam or in 2025. But we see also that some countries and even regions have banned dental amalgam also from their practice. And we can see that European Union, for example, banned dental amalgam in children, pregnant women, and even breastfeeding women in, since 2020, uh, 2018. And Tanzania, for example, which is one of the largest population countries in Africa, has also banned amalgam from in children and women in, in childbearing age. And the good news is that this year also, Poland has announced to ban dental amalgam this year for use in children and all women. So we see that we have countries which are all in the mood of banning and phase out all around the world. It's not a question of developing countries, but we see that some developed countries have, are also banned dental amalgam from their practice, and it's something which is banned progressively for, in so many developed countries and developing countries too. Based on that, we, coming to Africa region, you can see that African region uh, from the, I've started talking about uh, dental amalgam phase out was an issue for Africa region, especially. And we see that from the negotiation session to the implementation of Minamata Convention, dental amalgam emulation remained a priority for the Africa region. You can see that it started in 2012 during the preparation of INC4 for Uruguay, where the all African delegates approved that resolution in Pretoria to include dental amalgam in the, in the draft treaty text. We saw that it was the Africa region which proposed the nine step for dental amalgam phase on the final text of the convention. And after the convention was approved, it was the Africa region which started by the Abuja declaration stating that Africa will be the first continent to, to phase out dental amalgam. And when the convention entered into force in, 2000 and, in 2017, the Africa region started also a big campaign, a big awareness campaign to make amalgam a history. And we can see that since COP3, the debate on dental amalgam amendment has been issued by the Africa region. We had a first discussion at COP3 and the major discussion, discussion have been postponed for COP4.2 this year. So we see that the efforts from Africa region and even from other developing countries to phase down and phase out dental amalgam 
has been made through partnership with between dental association, dental school, and the scholar medicals, for example, to achieve a no more use amalgam in children, in, especially in vulnerable groups, for example. And that also made between the adoption of regulation in some countries, as I presented uh, earlier, we saw some countries which already banned dental amalgam for complete use, and some others phased out dental amal amalgam in, in the region. We also, countries work by also creating mercury-free dental clinics, so to promote uh, mercury-free dentistry around the continent. The change of curricula has been made possible in dental schools, for example, on emphasizing on mercury-free alter alternative in restorative care. We also have the adoption of technical guidelines for practitioners, as the case in, in Tanzania, for example. And a lot of activities were made on consumer education on dental mercury hazard, especially in local languages. You can see that from West Africa to East Africa, going through South to the North, all the local language were used to aware the population, even to aware the dentists also, and even government used this, the, the communication material in local language to, to inform the population. And now we see that there is a large promotion of uh, ART, the traumatic restorative technique by dentists. And we, we noted that we also have some amalgam import ban at country level, which has been observed in several countries. For now, we think that as we are entering, we are prepared for COP 4.2. Next week, we'll be starting the discussion. We think that a priority to, based on what has been done across different countries and across different regions, it's a priority now to phase out dental amalgam. Why? How we can do that? Because we handing dental amalgam now for most vulnerable uh, population is a good start. And we think that the proposal to move dental amalgam from Annex A part two to Annex A part one with a certain phase out date is something doable and achievable by all delegates, especially by all countries. And why? Because we think that for most the product in Annex A, for example, we have a phase out date and Dental amalgam also is part of that Annex A, and we think that based on the evolution in the different countries and different regions, it could also move from Annex A part two to Annex A part and with a certain date. Now, much has been done. We think that progress has been made in several countries, and we also have a consensus among signatories and parties, especially within the Africa region, where we have, we, they all agreed before submitting the, the, the amendment. And we think that if there is an agreement, there is that consensus be, between African parties, we think that that consensus also could be relied by parties from other region and to make the movement global and shift dental amalgam from Annex A part two to Annex A part one. How we can do that? We can even do it gradually because we think that we can start by eliminating uh, dental amalgam in deciduous teeth, in children under 15, in pregnant women, in breastfeeding women, especially in all vulnerable group, we can start by eliminating dental amalgam on them at a certain date and later we can progress with a ban of dental amalgam except where no mercury free alternative are available so we can we have these two steps banning it first with vulnerable group and have the large ban later for the whole of patients and on that note i thank you for your kind attention and remain available for all the questions thank you so much Thank you, Dominic. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is uh, Maria Carcamo. Please. Okay. Uh, do you have my presentation, Florian? Uh, I don't have the, the presentation. Okay. Share it full, maybe. Or you have it. I, I have it, but I do not I'm not sure how to how to to share it. Ah, you see the share okay. button. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the bottom. Uh, at the bottom. Sorry. Sorry you can um, speak if you like. Um, uh, uh, oh, where yeah. about? Right. Where about? At, at the bottom, you have mute button, stop video button, yes. and yes. share. Share yes. button is the next one, the third one. TC. No, so shift. No? You don't show see? captions no sorry uh show show captions no it's not no it's not that ah share content okay 
I don't know. Uh -oh. oh, here it is. Okay. Yes, so we. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Can you? But I, I can see you sharing. Hoover over and. Uh, 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 okay, now it's okay. I think this is okay. You, you, you can enlarge it, but, but it may take time. So, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from all around the world. Now I am going to read in Sp uh, my. I'm going to read in Spanish. Buen día para todos y todas las presentes de la región Grulac. Es un placer poder contar con su participación en un tema tan importante como es la eliminación gradual de la amalgama dental. Una necesidad emergente de eliminar el mercurio en los productos. Uh, my presentation is going to be about the Grulac region, obviously. Yes. Um, at the, at the Grulac region played a very important role during the negotiation in the convention promoted and worked very hard for the Article 16 health aspects, being this the key of the whole treaty. Uh, countries of the Grulag uh, region, uh, I will move a little bit, in the treaty. Most of the country have already signed and ratified the treaty. Uruguay ratified in September 2014, uh, Mexico 2015, and Jamaica, Brazil, and Argentina 2017, and Colombia 2019. These are just some of the some examples of what happened around uh, the Gulag region. Uh, I cannot move it. It doesn't move. Uh, I don't know what happened. Wait, I Maria, it is. Maria yeah. this is Sherry Full from the Secretariat. Could you click on the at your at the bottom of your screen? You can see a TV like shape. Can you see that? Uh, no, uh, no. Because... Uh, do you see notice? Do you see notice at the bottom of your screen? No. <laughs> Uh, wait, I will the uh, show the TV because I think it's not the whole screen. I cannot um, show that. To you. I don't know. It moved already, Sharifun. It's now already the next slide, I think. Yeah, it is. Continue. Uh, yes, by the way. Um, countries work towards mercury free dentistry in our region. And I am just going to show you some cases, some countries, what they have done up to now about uh, mercury-free dentistry. St. King's and Navy, dental amalgams has been changed to exclude mercury. Republic of Suriname, Suriname Dentistry Association has been established that mercury amalgam is practically no longer used in Surinamese dentistry. And a program was set up to completely hold the use of mercury amalgam in the dentistry. Brazil, a proposal law is waiting to be discussed at the Brazilian National Pro Congress that include prohibition of mercury amalgam in pregnant women, nursing mother, women and reproductive age, children and adolescents after 14 and vulnerable population. The proposal sets a three year deadline for the total elimination of mercury amalgam for the entire population. And Uruguay, the country that I am based on, in March 2021, the universities stopped teaching the use of dental amalgam. It is not in the curriculum program, theoretical, clinical, and any dental use. And we believe that this is like turning off the tap. If you stop teaching, you won't be able to uh, the, the, we will reach a point that nobody will know how to use it. So next one. Um, phrase down and now dental amalgam under the proposal by the African region. Uh, 
festival and amalgam using children and in women of childbearing age. That it was mentioned before as well, this point by Dominic. To set out natural and plan concerning to measure, it intends to implement to phrase out the use of dental amalgam and make it public. Very important. If you make a plan, you will be able to you follow and uh, you can be able to uh, work on the proper path. Number three, cis uh, manufacture and import of dental amalgam. To, to account for exception and accommodate the transition to mercury free dentistry. Now, uh, the last one I, I mentioned before if you end teaching uh, amalgam placement in all dental school, it is the direct route to mercury free dentistry and to support the African proposal. And I will finish with something that it was mentioned before as well by Dominique, that in most of the Grula countries, the use of dental amalgam, amalgam and the private sector is nearly eliminated completely and is moving towards the elimination at the public clinics and hospitals. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. May we continue with a, a contribution a contribution from uh, Brazil. I think, Shariful, we have a, a video registration. If you would be so kind to to play the video con video now or. Hi, Florian. Yes, we will do it in a moment. Thank you. Thank you. I can say it is uh, Honorable Vincente Paulo da Silva, Federal Deputy in Congress of uh, Brazil. Senhores, inicialmente eu gostaria de agradecer a Aliança Mundial para a Odontologia Livre de Mercúrio pelo convite em nome de seu coordenador global, o senhor Charles Brau e a senhora Maria Isabel Cárcamo como coordenadora da Aliança para a América Latina pela oportunidade de participar desse evento. Paralelo da Conferência das Partes da Convenção de Minamata COP 4.2. Gostaria também de felicitar a Secretaria da Convenção de Minamata pela organização desse importante evento. No Brasil, eu atuo como deputado federal há 19 anos. Entre as atribuições do deputado está a de legislar, ou seja, discutir e aprovar leis que organizam o Estado e definem as políticas públicas que influenciam a vida de todos os brasileiros e controlar as ações do Poder Executivo, além da defesa dos vários projetos em defesa da dignidade humana, em defesa da vida, em defesa do meio ambiente. A importância dessa convenção está em seu primeiro artigo, que seu objetivo é o de proteger a saúde humana e o meio ambiente das emissões e liberações de mercúrio e de compostos de mercúrio causadas pela ação do homem. Peritos de diversas partes do mundo constataram os riscos do mercúrio, que causam preocupações sanitárias especialmente nos países em desenvolvimento, com a exposição de populações vulneráveis, especialmente mulheres, crianças e, por meio dessas, as futuras gerações. Reconhecemos importantes lições da doença de Minamata, em particular, os sérios efeitos sobre a saúde 
e o meio ambiente decorrentes da poluição por mercúrio e a necessidade de assegurar a gestão apropriada do mercúrio e a prevenção de eventos adversos no futuro. Tenho, inclusive, dialogado com vários profissionais da área sobre o tema, entre eles, Dr. Remilson Teixeira, sua filha, a doutora Lília Petekoff Gomes Ojeda, e o doutor Wagner Rosa Júnior, membro do Conselho Regional de Odontologia do Estado de São Paulo. O amálgama de restauração dentária é uma liga composta por 50% de mercúrio elementar. Sabemos que o mercúrio é uma das substâncias mais nocivas ainda utilizadas na sociedade e, portanto, uma convenção internacional que conta com o envolvimento de mais de 120 países pode trabalhar em colaboração para seu controle imediato e eliminação total em prazo aceitável. Observamos com atenção as recentes recomendações da Food and Drug Administration americana sobre as necessárias restrições ao uso do amálgama às populações vulneráveis e observamos também as resoluções da ONU Europeia que adotou a proibição do uso de amálgama em crianças gestantes e lactantes, estando trabalhando para a redução e eliminação do uso do amálgama de mercúrio para toda a população. No início de 2021, eu e os demais deputados fomos alcançados por meio de uma carta encaminhada pelos representantes da Aliança Mundial para a Odontologia Livre de Mercúrio no Brasil, contendo diversas informações sobre os riscos do amálgama de mercúrio e nos solicitavam uma ação para o controle e eliminação dos usos desse metal tóxico na odontologia. Eu e vários deputados respondemos à demanda, apoiando imediatamente a iniciativa e a Frente Parlamentar da Odontologia, que eu faço parte, acatou a demanda e propôs o projeto de lei que recebeu o número 3098 de 2021. Esse projeto de lei concorda com a proposta africana e europeia para a proteção ambiental e da saúde dos profissionais e usuários da rede de saúde pública e privada e cumpre os compromissos do Brasil assumidos na Convenção de Minamata sobre Mercúrio. O projeto, muito bem desenhado, está harmonizado com as legislações mais modernas ao reconhecer o problema, agir com prudência e energia, identificando os limites profissionais técnicos, comerciais e as possibilidades de manejar as ações que não prejudiquem profissionais, usuários e fortalecendo o tripé do desenvolvimento sustentável nas suas esferas ambiental, econômica e social. O projeto de lei disciplina a utilização de amálgamas de mercúrio em procedimentos odontológicos. Um vedando imediatamente em todo o território nacional a realização de procedimentos odontológicos com amálgama de mercúrio em inciso 1, mulheres, gestantes, lactantes ou em idade reprodutiva. Inciso 2, crianças e adolescentes menores de 14 anos de idade. Inciso 3, pessoas com doenças neurológicas ou renais. Inciso 4, pessoas com antecedentes de exposição prolongada ao mercúrio ou diagnóstico prévio de intoxicação pelo mercúrio. Artigo 2, estabelecendo um prazo de três anos para que os amálgamas de mercúrio sejam abolidos totalmente em procedimentos odontológicos. Artigo 3, estabelece um prazo para que os profissionais 
elaborem o seu plano de redução gradativa do uso de amálgamas dentários. Artigo 4 e apresenta medidas para tratamento de sobras de mercúrio e de amálgamas. Estou comprometido com essa causa e juntamente com o deputado Gaguin, que apresentou em nosso nome o projeto de lei, eu quero crer que junto aos demais deputados da Frente Parlamentar da Odontologia, da odontologia trabalharemos para dar celeridade para a apreciação e deliberação desse projeto visando a proteção ambiental e da saúde humana. Deixo nesse momento manifestação de que a COP 4.2 da Convenção de Minamata seja um sucesso no cumprimento de seus objetivos e que possamos avançar rapidamente para a odontologia livre de mercúrio em defesa da vida, em defesa da dignidade humana. Muito obrigado. Uh, <coughs> dear participant and speaker, I'm sorry, because of the technical reason I was uh, disconnected. So, <coughs> Rodian, would you please uh, continue? No problem. Just remind the speakers that we have limited time. So please uh, uh, speak uh, within three minutes limit. And, and Dr. Akanka, you can ask Dr. Akanka. Uh, my name is Dr. Akanksha. I am from India and I'm a dentist currently working as a program coordinator in Toxics Link. So I am speaking without a presentation because it's more about my personal experience as a dentist. So when I was in dental school back in 2009, uh, our entire curriculum was amalgam centric. So all the preclinical, all the clinical teachings that we had were largely based on restorations which were containing mercury. With passing of time, when we graduated back in 2015 and I entered the market, there was a dynamic shift. Private clinics were no longer using mercury-based restorations for treatment in patients. Even before coming here, I had a talk with a lot of my colleagues who were working in different parts of the country, in, in Metro, Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities. And most of them have not done a single amalgam restoration in the last seven years. Yes, this is a very positive stride in the direction of becoming uh, amalgam free in dentistry in my country. Uh, so when we talked about the reasons why there has been a shift, uh, the, uh, the, I think the biggest one is because the current alternatives that are now present in the country are as good as amalgam. So we talk about technical terms like longevity, like fracture resistance. So all of it is at par with what amalgam used to achieve. So there is, there is no need to go back to amalgam restorations. Provided there's an added bonus of aesthetics, these restorations are better looking. They are more, uh, they preserve the tooth structure more as Dominic also pointed out in his presentation. And the biggest reason uh, perhaps is the environmental and the health cost. Back in my day when we were in college, little to no heat was paid on how to deal with amalgam waste, especially the non-contact amalgam. But now more and more, because there's been so much work done by civil societies, by organizations like World Alliance for Mercury Free Dentistry, uh, in, which are in con uh, constant contact with colleges, uh, 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 doing seminars and webinars and meetings and creating awareness about this issue, and especially among females, because I tell you in India, dentistry is largely a female centric business. The number of females to male ratio in dental colleges is largely skewed. So the researchers would suggest that there are reproductive issue problems among females. So that has also been one of the cause that there is a large shift in the market because of that as well. And it is not, not just related to uh, private clinics. If you talk about big dental chains, there has been a massive change. Most of them are now mercury free. The Indian armed forces, all the hospitals associated with them are totally mercury free. The Indian Railways, which is perhaps the biggest employer in the country, they are also on the brink of becoming amalgam free. And as well as young dentists are now opening up holistic dental clinics, which are mostly, and we're very vocal about the harmful impacts of 
mercury on both the health and environment so yes there has been a change and another thing is that india has now started manufacturing these products in the country so that has also led to the shift in pricing so the difference that was 70 to 80 percent earlier has now reduced to 20 to 30 percent when we talk about the clinical practices and how dentists charge for both of these treatments and the patient satisfaction with the alternates is very good. So most dentists do not feel uh, that Dr. Dr. Akanka, please uh, short. Oh yeah, so definitely. So basically I just want to say that as a country, we are almost at the brink of becoming mercury free, at least in dentistry, yes, for sure. And uh, the issue is still lies the problem that we have a curriculum which is amalgam centric. But I think with the humongous infrastructure that we have in the country and the number of trained professionals, I'm sure that uh, once there is a change in subject and yes, the government of India has al already is already started to work on this. There is a draft operational guidelines which are being issued, which talks about ban, uh, which talks about phasing down of amalgam and uh, change in curriculum as well. So I think we will make the change in time to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Akankha. And now I would like to request uh, Dr. Mohammad Khashasne, Secretary General, Ministry of Environment, Government of in Kingdom of Jordan. Dr. Khashasne. Dr. Mahabud, can you hear me? I don't think we see him. But I, I see the text. Okay, no problem. We can go for the next speaker and I would like to request uh, Madam Honorable Rosie Kabageni, former member of Parliament of Uganda. Madam Rosie. How are you? Please unmute. Madam Rosie, can you hear me? Uh, I see, but uh, you are mute. Yes. Good evening, everyone. You can hear me? Yes, and please. Good morning and good afternoon, the world. I'm Kava Generosi from Uganda. And I'm happy to be part of this great event uh, to discuss very pertinent issues about the end of uh, dental amalgam and the use of mercury in our environment and in our health systems. And I would like to first thank uh, the president of the World Alliance for mercury free dentistry for this great invitation and the participation. Uh, first of all, Uganda. Uh, is one of the of the uh, signatories to the to the Manimata Convention, and it was signed and ratified in 2019. So we have all the reasons to be part of the world and also to to end the use of dental amalgam uh, and in our in our health systems. Uh, first of all, I would want to bring it to your notice that Uganda, being a party to that, we have a lot of mature use in our environment, in the mining industry, uh, in the pharmaceuticals, uh, in the electronics, in the, mostly in many of the things that we use in Uganda. And the government has been trying hard to see how best we can regulate this with the help of the world. I, I know Kenyans have done it. I know Tanzania have done it. And other African countries, Dominic and others have done it. So we can also do it. And to this effect, um, 
uh, I wanted to bring it to your attention that uh, Uganda, we have uh, done a lot of things. First of all, we have formulated the national action plan um, to see how um, much the uh, all dental amalgam can be uh, can 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 be ended or eliminated, and in so doing, we have um, a government of Uganda has uh, uh, really um, uh, organized a lot of uh, advocacy and awareness sensitization meetings in for the masses so that we can really all get to know the, the dangers of use of maturity and the, uh, especially in the dental uh, industry. And with that, also the government of Uganda is collaborating with other development partners like UNEPI. UNEPI is the, the United Nations uh, Environmental Program that to develop many other alternative uses so, so that people can can have other other alternative uses to the dental amalgam and also uh, to create other projects and programs that could really lead to the um, elimination of maturity. Also, the government of Uganda is promoting research and development so that we can develop as many alternatives uh, as possible. And we also have um, a knowledge sharing exchange so that maybe we can go to Tanzania, where they have really tried uh, or visit other countries to see what they are doing and, uh, and benchmark and then come back and share the, the knowledge. Also, Uganda uh, is, has uh, legal frameworks in place, like over at the moment for the National Environment Action Plan. At the moment, the parliament has passed the national mining policy because a lot of um, material is used in, in mining uh, when they are... Um, they are, they are purifying gold. So uh, we have passed the, the national mining policy so that really people can, uh, first of all, know the dangers of mercury and maybe have alternatives to, the, to, the, to that effect. And in that, in so doing, uh, I cannot also, uh, we, we have not left behind other stakeholders, other, other stakeholders in environment. We have the National Environment Management Authority and other civil society organizations that are in the, uh, are also promoting a free environment. So we are doing a lot to see, to see that uh, we end the use of mercury in our environment. I can also not forget the, the to, ha to highlight the importance of the president of the World Alliance for Mercury Free Dentistry in Uganda in 2019, where I got the opportunity to meet him. And uh, we shared, because before that, I think we, we did not know what to do exactly. Even uh, when I presented it to the Parliament of Uganda, uh, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Environment, the Minister of Energy, and other civil society organizations were awakened. And now people are working hard to see how we can end this uh, very dangerous, toxic substances to the environment. And also uh, Madam, uh, in Madam Uganda... Droji, Madam Droji, I apologize. Uh, we have to finish your term because we are waiting for more three speakers okay it's it's fine but uh, we have a lot we are doing maybe you can still share online but we, sure. for us we have we are saying if other countries can do that then also uganda can do it and yes we can thank you so much thank you now i would like to request dr muhammad kasasene secretary general ministry of environment government of the Kingdom of Jordan. Dr. Kassasan. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, long time we didn't communicate with you. Happy to uh, join this meeting today in uh, Mercury in accession to the COP4 of Minamata Convention and uh, under the uh, title Phasing Out Dental Amalgam. Uh, Dear colleagues in Jordan, our objective to uh, achieve the transition from dental amalgam to non-mercury alternative because this non-mercury alternative are available, visible, and beneficial to health and environment. Non-mercury alternatives are available as proven by 
the many dentists and entire countries that really on them uh, exclusively. Uh, at 2019, CRV found that Jordanian dentists are already using more non-mercury composite than dental amalgam. Non-mercury alternatives are visible. Jordan has a national health insurance program that cover dental care at the modest cost and service is provided free to the poor. So it will be uh, economically feasible for all patients to receive non-mercury alternatives. And non-mercury alternatives are uh, beneficial to health and environment where the transition from dental amalgam to non-mercury alternatives is practically, is practically important to in Jordan because as our mercury initial assessment found, dental amalgam is one of the major source categories that made the largest contribution to the mercury input in Jordan. Uh, also, uh, Jordan is seeking to phase down the use of dental amalgam in the uh, phased manner. The Jordanian Ministry of Environment addressed all relevant authorities in uh, dentistry to work on the phase down of using dental amalgam and more and move toward the, uh, the use of non mercury alternatives. The Jordanian Dental Association, it is one of the most active associations in Jordan, and the Jordanian Royal Medical uh, Service and the Ministry of Health were addressed by the Ministry of Environment to do so. In addition, the universities that teach uh, the, the, the dentistry so that students will uh, uh, touch the alternative than mercury materials used in dental filling instead of dental amalgam where the Ministry of Environment also will support the effort to accelerate the phasing out of dental amalgam containing mercury. Believing that the need to reduce uh, the use of mercury containing products, including the dental amalgam, a project will be implemented within the third round of specific international program of the Minimata Convention on uh, Mercury. Environmentally sound management of mercury containing uh, waste and reduce the use of mercury containing products in Jordan. And the workplace risk from mercury vapors is uh, substantial to dental works in amalgam using clinics and hospitals where dental amalgam, not modern density in the tooth, uh, unfriendly requiring removal of good uh, tooth matter. The alternatives like composite and uh, numerous are modern, non-polluting, and tooth-friendly. Therefore, the use of non-mercury alternative instead of dental amalgam will eliminate the source of this pollution, producing both environmentally and health benefit. For example, regarding the end of amalgam use of the uh, nation, Nepal, Philippines, Bangladesh, Japan, and others. Made great effort, some are in the phase out of dental amalgam use of stopping teaching, uh, amalgam to dental student or the others are in banning amalgam use uh, or in stopping use of amalgam for children, uh, pregnant women and uh, breastfeeding women. In this regard, the important role of the local community is assessing that this offer cannot be forgotten. Therefore, the Jordanian Ministry of Environment worked in cooperation with the NGOs to achieve this objective and transition on mercury free density. And the joint survey conducted between the Ministry of Environment and the Land and the Human Advocate Progress Lahab, which is Ziad headed this, uh, this NGO, a national Jordanian NGO uh, re, uh, revealed that 60% believe that dental amalgam is not safe to both patient and dentist. 35.6% uh, of the patient requests having the alternatives where 34.6% attribute this to the healthy and environmentally reason, an indicator of the patient being aware of the impact of dental amalgam and the availability of alternatives. 97% att uh, attribute that teeth sensitively to dental amalgam. Uh, 76.9% of the dentists 
do not use dental amalgam for the sake of keeping the teeth chipping the beautiful unless patient request about 15 percent of the patient based on the outcome uh, uh, revealed, revealed from the MIA Mercury Initial Assessment Study and this survey study Jordan would in the upcoming COP for support all effort that will lead to phase out through phase down of dental amalgam based on the precise time frame. I would like to thank you and thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your kind words and important information. So because of the time limit, we have two major speakers. I request them to limit your speech in two to three minutes maximum. Now I request Iun Ismwati, Senior Advisor of Nexus 3 and Focal Person of HIPEN, Jakarta, Indonesia. Iun, please. Thank you so much, Sharyar. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Mohammed. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to see everyone. I'd like to share my screen just briefly. Hang on. Ah, shoot. Um, sorry. I would like to just um, go directly to the lessons learned. Um, in Indonesia, we uh, started this work in 2011. Uh, started with the pilot in Bali, support with the support from the Healthcare Without Harm. After, the, uh, after that, uh, we continue with uh, approach uh, to the Ministry of Health to develop the National Action Plan to control mercury impact on human health, 2016-2020. Uh, and then when Indonesia ratified the Minamata Convention in 2017, there is a presidential decree um, to, de to develop the National Action Plan um, to reduce and uh, eliminate um, mercury. So the National Action Plan that was uh, used to be developed by the Ministry of Health integrated into the presidential decree and uh, now um, already implemented uh, until 2025. However, the, uh, to address the dental amalgam, that's included in the health sector strategy, which is con uh, consisted of withdrawal all medical devices containing mercury. Um, until last year, um, uh, although the target is 2020 to phase out, uh, until December 2021, uh, Indonesia already phased out 8,000 kilograms of mercury containing devices. Um, the effectiveness is really depending on the storage where the withdrawal medical devices will be stored. And for this, uh, the Ministry of Environment um, provided the guidance and issued the regulation. So to effectively phase out uh, dental amalgam, the Indonesian government just decided to uh, prohibit um, the importation and trade of uh, and use of dental amalgams without uh, um, issuing a specific regulations to uh, for specific group of, of populations. And the dentistry curriculum also already revised um, in 2015. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, combined with the online system of registrations of withdrawal, um, the phase out of dental amalgam is uh, very smoothly done uh, without uh, so many restrictions or objections from the stakeholders. Um, the treatment of the medical devices that withdraw um, is under the Ministry of Environment's responsibility uh, and it's covered by the national budget. Um, but we still need to have uh, an effective monitoring of uh, dental amalgam import and export um, because Indonesia is the large country that use um, mercury for ASGM. Uh, and also online trade of amalgam uh, in e-commerce platforms uh, also still need to be regulated. 
Um, so I'm optimistic that other countries also can follow uh, and face out without talking about uh, face down or talking too much about uh, what kind of strategy, good strategy in that. Um, as soon as you prohibited the trade and use, it will be disappear from the market and push the dental uh, sector to use the alternative. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I get back to you to uh, Sharia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yun. Now we have the last but not uh, the least speaker, uh, Dr. Christopher Kabashi, President of Jimbabwean Jambian Dental Association. Dr. Kapasi, we apologize because of the time limit. Please uh, be within the three minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I think let me just go ahead and uh, share my presentation. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, if not, let me just go ahead and speak without the... the yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yes, for us... Uh, I'm giving the a Zambian uh, story, and I think I'll take three minutes. I think in 2001, we started uh, uh, in conjunction with Ministry of Health, we were doing automatic restorative technique as spoken by uh, Dr. Uh, Dominic Bali. And we were concentrating on children of the age of six, um, six, six years. Why six years? Six years is because we're targeting the six-year molar tooth. What is this six-year molar tooth? This is a molar tooth which comes in the mouth first at the age of six years. And this is the most filled tooth in the mouth. Therefore, we're targeting at this tooth so that we can treat it with uh, alternatives to amalgam, that is fissure seal, and so that these children cannot develop dental caries or decay in that tooth. Therefore, eliminating any chance of anyone trying to put dental amalgam in that tooth. So 98% of any child who was born in 1996 in Zambia have alternative filling materials placed. So we have been doing this for the last past 21 years. Therefore, which means any child, any person who is at the age of 26 does not have a dental amalgam feeling in their mouth. So we have been doing this uh, gradually. We have ramped up the use of alternatives to dental amalgam and we have changed the curriculum of teaching. There is no dental feeling teaching in the universities. All what is remaining in universities is historical. So we just use it for historic uh, purposes. Otherwise, no teaching, no examination with uh, dental amalgam. With systemic approach of introducing alternatives to dental amalgam in dentistry, phasing out of dental amalgam is possible. Therefore, Zambia stands with the position taken by the African Dental Amalgam Amendment proposal to amend Annex A, Part 2 of the Minamata Convention, uh, on, Convention on Mercury. We have also tried to engage the Ministry of Commerce so that they stop, we stop any amount of importation of dental amalgam or its equivalent in, in, in our country. For us, it has been 21 years of trying to eliminate uh, dental amalgam and we have succeeded. In, in, in four years time, the children who were, we started in 2001 will be 30 years and will publish something to that effect, how to effectively remove 
going to amalgam slowly in an African setting. Dental amalgam should be made history. Dental amalgam will be made history. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kapashi. Yes, we will together make the dental amalgam history. And thank you for all of your excellent participation speakers, participants, and we apologize. We cannot give the question and answer session because of the time limit. And we also help and thanks to the Secretariat, particularly the team, Isaku, Shariful, Pablo, and Richard to make this event success. This is our together events. And I would like to uh, invite Isaku to close this session and give her closing remarks. Isaku, please. Sharia for this wonderful event. Uh, uh, this is very informative and I'm very glad that, that our parties are taking action to, uh, to, to protect human health and the environment from, from uh, mercury. Uh, and um, uh, as, as, as I said, uh, this, uh, uh, we were going to have other uh, sessions on dental amalgam. So uh, we very much look forward to the informed discussion at COP4 COP on the uh, dental amalgam uh, annex, uh, annex, annex, annex A to the Minamata Convention. Thank you very much and, and have a uh, nice day, evening or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Stay See safe, you Paul. soon.